Good morning. This morning we're going to show you how to create a cut list using my plugin Cutlist Bridge 2.3. At this point I assume you have installed Cutlist Bridge and you can check to see whether you installed it correctly in the following manner. First, look at the file menu. You should see two commands export to Cutlist Plus FX export to Microsoft Excel or OpenOffice. These are the export commands you will use depending on what it is you want to view your cut list in. If you are a user of Cutlist Plus FX, this would be the ex export command you would use. If you are a user of either Microsoft Excel or OpenOffice, then you would use this command. The second way you can check to see whether you've installed it correctly is to look under the Windows menu. And at the bottom, or close to the bottom, you'll see Extended Entity Info. That will bring up a dialog box that is sort of a partner to the Entity Info box. Uh, and I'll show you more about that later. The third way you can check to see whether you installed it correctly is, again, look under Window, Preferences. And you should see Cutlist Bridge with a check mark next to it when looking at the extensions page. Also, if you choose Cutlass Bridge, you will see a little bit of information. You've got version 2.3. It's a released version. This is who I am and how to get me via email. And it's copyrighted. OK, so now we know we've got it installed correctly. And let's suppose we want to create a very simple cut list. We don't want to embellish it with things like material names and things like that, but we just want a quick and dirty cut list. It's very easy. All you have to do is bring up a picture of your model. And make sure it's only one copy of the model because you don't want a cut list that uh, creates twice as many parts as you need or something like that. So make sure it's only one copy of the uh, model. And then select the entire model. A good way to do that is to encompass the whole model in a box, a selection box, going from left to right. I'm going to bring the Entity Info box out of here at this point. And I'm going to go to Window. Oh no, let me, let me not do that at the moment. Now let me just create the cut list. All I have to do is go to Export Microsoft Excel or OpenOffice. I'm going to be using OpenOffice because it's a little more friendly for the um, tutorial purpose. But later on when I've completed the cut list that I want, I'll show you how to do it in Excel and Cutlist Plus as well. But for the moment, I'm going to use OpenOffice. So I just click Export to Microsoft Excel or OpenOffice. And immediately I get a little message. This message is important. It tells you where it's putting the file. It will always put it in the same folder that the model itself is in. In this case, my model is on my desktop, and so it's going to put it under my username, desktop, same name as the model name, with the extension CSV. Notice my model name here is Shaker Tall Clock Dash Cutlist Bridge Tutorial dot skip. This is the same name. The only thing that's been changed is the extension to .csv. So I click OK, and that's it. You can't see it at the moment, but on my desktop is a file called Shaker Talk Clock .csv. All I need to do is go to the file on my desktop, right click, and say Open or Open With, depending on what I have Open associated with. I want to open this with the OpenOffice spreadsheet program, which is called scalc.exe. So I say open with scalc.exe. When I do, a dialog box opens up. And the important parts of this dialog box is to choose the right character set. Most likely, if I'm using Windows and I'm in an English-speaking country, I will use the Western Europe ISO 8885914 character set. My language is English, USA, and I'm going to start importing from the first row. Under Separator Options, 
I want to check separated by comma. The file that I exported is a .csv file, which is a comma separated values file. The text delimiter for the CSV file is the double quote. You only have two options. Make sure you choose the double quote. If I move this up a little bit, you can see that once I've set those options, I now get a sample of what it is that the spreadsheet is going to look like. You can see the column headings and some information about the components. Okay, all I have to do at this point is say OK. And notice OpenOffice SCALC or the spreadsheet uh, program comes up and I now have my cut list. It's as simple as that. Notice that the first major category is uncategorized. And the reason is because we haven't done anything with our components in terms of assigning them attributes with Cutlass Bridge. One of the things you can assign with Cutlass Bridge is the type of material you're using, whether it's rough lumber, dimensioned lumber, sheet goods, or other items. We made no attribute assignments, so it says it doesn't know what type of material we're using. We've also not assigned any subassemblies, so there's nothing in the subassembly column. The description column is a list of the components or parts. The number of copies of that part that we need. The material name, and again, since we haven't assigned any attributes at all, there's no material attributes here. Next, moving over here a little bit, I get the thickness of the component, the width, and the length. Now these are overall dimensions meant to cut rough stock from width. The next few columns we're going to ignore at the moment. Um, can rotate, banding, info, and notes. Since we've assigned no attributes, these are of no interest to us, and what we can do in our spreadsheet is simply delete those columns. We'll get to those later. The next three columns are decimal thickness, decimal width, and decimal length. If I just move this back a little bit, you'll be able to see that this thickness is three quarters of an inch. This is the decimal equivalent. The purpose of these numbers is if you want to put some equations in your spreadsheet to help you calculate things like board feet, area, or volume, you've already got the decimal equivalents. Trying to convert these um, unit delimited um, or unit specified dimensions here in a spreadsheet is uh, to decimal numbers so you can do calculations is quite difficult. So I've done that for you already and supplied them. If you don't need them, if you don't want to make any calculations, you can delete those columns as well. Okay, so there's our simple spreadsheet. Notice that it is in alphabetical order and should contain all the parts in my clock model. Okay, that's it. That's the simple spreadsheet. Now we're going to embellish it. So let's close this. Let's go back and deselect everything. Now, if you want to add attributes to a model, you have to bring up the extended entity info. It's a fairly large dialog box that barely fits on this screen. And so I'm going to bring it on what I'm going to do for the moment is um, get rid of layers here. I'll bring that off screen. And I'll bring on the uh, Entity Info box. It has four tabs. The first tab is where you assign attributes. The second tab is for creating lists. For instance, you can choose the type of list that you want to either create or edit, whether it is rough lumber, dimension lumber, or sheet goods. 
and you can add to that list for instance if you choose the rough lumber list you can remove something that's already on it you can down I choose the the down uh, arrow select something and then using the minus button delete that from the list if you want to add something to the list you simply type the name of what you want to add to the list in here and click the plus button you can back up the list and then if you make changes and screw it up and you're a little worried about that you can restore the list if you have cut list plus FX you can ex export the list that's in cut list plus FX and create these lists within extended entity info from your Cutlass Plus FX program. It's going to be a while before we get to that, so let's just, just mention it now and talk about it later. The simple spreadsheet I just created used this order of columns. Remember it had a sub-assembly, a, sub a description, copies, material type, material name, thickness, width, length, can rotate, banding, info, notes, decimal thickness, decimal width, that decimal length. You can change this list, and you can change it in interesting ways. For instance, suppose you want to leave all of this out. Well, if you, I'm sorry, let's start with uh, can rotate. Let's leave can rotate out. All we have to do is choose a blank. There will now be a blank column there. If I want to leave banding out, I can choose a blank. Same thing for info and notes. Now what I might want to put in these blank column places um, is maybe the decimal thicknesses. So I could put blanks here and then here choose de de decimal thickness, decimal width, decimal length, and put blanks here. And now the columns will appear in this order. If I want a space between, if I want a blank column for some reason, I can move, for instance, suppose I want a blank column after this length. What I can do is move decimal length down one. Oops, I didn't do that right. Decimal length, decimal width, decimal thickness, and blank. Now I've got a blank column between length and the decimal numbers. So I can put these columns in any order I want uh, by uh, just rearranging things this way. And I'm going to leave them like this for the moment so that when we create our next cut list, uh, it'll appear this way. Setup tab allows you to do things like set your defaults, save your defaults for the program. For instance, suppose you have a model that has a material type and a or sub-assembly that's very much the same in most of the parts. You can fill out this form here. Then go to Setup and click Save as Default. And that will be your default parameters for um, attributes. We'll get to that later. We're not going to use it right at the moment. I'm also not going to explain this in detail right at the moment, but for the moment Let's make sure that we have info selected, description with the leftmost radio button, and subassembly with the component group radio button, and save that field format. These, in other words, when we open up the entity info box again, it'll come up with these selections. There is a button down here that you can use if you've already created a model with attributes and you want to erase all of those attributes and return the, the attributes to blank. This initializes every single component in the model to blanks. And of course you can get help. If you push this button it will open up a PDF user's guide. And that's an easy way to get help. Alright, so now let's go back to assigning attributes. Well, one way I could do it is to pick every single part, one part at a time. That will and fill out this form for every single part. 
In a model like this that has an enormous number of parts, that would not be a wise thing to do. But I can start to think about what it is I'm trying to do. And with thinking ahead a little bit, I can make life really easy and I can assign all the attributes I have to assign quite easily. One thing I know is that this whole clock is going to be built out of rough lumber. So what I might do is select the whole clock. Oop, I didn't get everything here. Make sure you get everything. Select the whole clock. And I'll say the material type is rough lumber. I also know that 90% of the material in this is going to be cherry. So I'll select cherry. Now that'll assign cherry to every material name for every component. Now the nice thing is I'll only have to change a few number of components. So I'll say I'll select cherry and put that in there. I don't have any notes that are common to every single part or info that's common to every single part. So if I did, I could put them here. And also, um, not every single part is going to be in the same subassembly category. So I'll leave that blank for the moment. All right, now what I must do is hit Save Attributes. If I don't hit Save Attributes, these attributes won't be saved. So I say Save Attributes. All right, now let's uncheck all these parts. And let's just examine them. Notice when I choose that side, it says Rough Lumber Cherry. When I choose this front, it says Rough Lumber Cherry. Every part should say Rough Lumber. If I choose this column, it should say Rough Lumber Cherry. All right. So now I've got that much done. Now here's the other thing that I might want to do. I was smart enough to think ahead when I did this model. And when I named the layers that I use to put my components on, I preceded the name of the layer with the assembly that it's in. Notice I've got a back which stands by itself. I've got a bunch of base components. I got the base blocking, I got the base bottom, I got the base cove molding, I got the base duff panel, and the base front, as well as the base sides. That base is a subassembly. I got a feet subassembly, and it's made up of the feet themselves, feet blocks and splines, and feet cove trim. My next subassembly is the hood. And in a very similar fashion, I've got hood architectural molding, hood backing boards, and so on and so forth. So I named my layers based on the subassembly. And then I put the appropriate parts on those layers. So if I want to name, if I want to assign attributes to, to let's, if I want to assign the subassembly attributes, what I can do is first of all clear all the visible layers and I have a tool to do that that I wrote. Okay, so I brought this little toolbar uh, for a script that I wrote called Layers Tools. And one of the things I can do is clear all layers. And that just makes things a little easier so I don't have to get down and uncheck each visible box. I'm going to bring that toolbar offline now. So when I use it, you'll know what I'm doing, but I'm just going to bring it offline here. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the back. Click that. Select it. And now I can say subassembly back. Since I all already have rough lumber selected in Cherry, all I need to do is say Save Attribute. And now when I come back to the back, notice that I have, it's now a subassembly back. The material type is rough lumber, and the material name is Cherry. Well, that was a simple one. Let me clear all my layers again. This time, I'm going to choose the base, all the base. And now that I've got them all shown, I've got to select all of them. Having done that, I can now type in base as the subassembly. And 
don't forget to save attributes. I'll clear all my layers. Bring my layer box up front here again. And now I'll do the feet. Notice there's only th uh, three layers that contain the feet. I select all of that and I can call that the feet subassembly. Assign attributes. I'm, at this point I'm going to go offline and finish this because it's just repetitive and taking screen time. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay, I'm back. And my, my last sub-assembly was the waste. I chose all the waste layers. Assigned waste as the sub-assembly. Save the attributes. And now I'm done with the sub-assembly. Now what I've got left is there are some parts in here that are not cherry. I want to seek those out and change them to the uh, type of material they really are. To do this, you need to know something about the model. And since you probably were the developer of the model, you probably do. Well, I happen to know that the back, well, I'll get to the back in a moment. I happen to know that the base has three components that are made out of cherry and the rest are made out of poplar. For instance, the cove molding is cherry, the base front is cherry, and the base sides are cherry. And we've already uh, assigned them a material type of cherry. We've also assigned cherry to all the other parts, the base blocking, the base bottom, the base uh, dust panel. But those aren't cherry. Even though they are assigned cherry already, we know they aren't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of that and I'm going to change cherry Well, I may have to reselect rough lumber here to get my drop down back. And then change cherry to poplar. You can't see poplar, it's a little off the screen, but there we go. And now I'll save attributes. All right, now when I look at my blocking one part at a time, you'll see that it's poplar. The dust panel, all of these parts are poplar. All right. Let me go back to my list here. I'm going to clear all my layers and choose the back. The back is also poplar. Actually, the back is not poplar. I, I, um, I used waste cherry for the back in my real thing, so I'm going to leave it cherry. I know that the back isn't going to have my best cherry, but I did use cherry on the real thing. So I'm going to leave this cherry. What I will do is go to my feet. I know the feet are cherry. The feet blocks and splines are not, and the feet cove trim are cherry. So the only thing I have to change is the feet blocks and splines. So I'll clear all my layers, go to feet blocks and splines, Choose them all. Reselect this so I get my drop down again. And now I can choose Poplar. Save attributes. If you don't save attributes, you're going to be very frustrated. But now if I go pick any of these parts, they're poplar. All right, I'm going to do this one more time on screen, then I'm going to go off screen to do the rest. So I'll go back here. I've got the feet done. The hood. The hood's a pretty big one. I'll leave that go and do that offline. The waist cove molding I know is cherry. Well, first of all, let me erase all my, or get rid of all my layers. Uh, the waste cove molding I know is cherry. The waste cove molding blocks are not. They're poplar, so I'll bring those up. 
the waist door is cherry, the face frame is cherry, and the sides are cherry. So the only thing I have to worry about here is the waistcoat molding blocks, the blocking. And let me bring those on uh, screen here. These two are poplar. And I'll select all those and assign them poplar. I have to reselect this list in order to get the drop down back. Uh, but there we go. And now I save attributes. Okay, I'm going offline to finish this up and I'll come back and I'll show you the list that uh, the cut list that we can now generate. Hi, I'm back. I assigned all my poplar parts, the uh, material named poplar. It only took me a minute. Uh, now I'm back and I've got my model totally selected, one copy of my model. I'm looking at the columns tab just to remind you that we changed the column output to look something like this, which is all the important information. Subassemblies, description, copies, material type, material name, thickness, width, length, the blank column, and then thick, uh, decimal thickness, decimal width, decimal length. And now, if I look at uh, assign attributes, since I have everything selected, the only thing that is consistent among all these parts is that they're all material type rough lumber. That's why you see everything else blank, because there's nothing else consistent among all of these parts. All right, now I can make a cut list, and it's very simple. I go to the File menu. I say Export to uh, Open Office, which is what I'm going to use. I get my note telling me where the, the file is being stored. I say OK. Now I have to open that file. So off screen, I right click on the file and say open with scalc.exe. My dialog box comes up. I don't have to do anything to it now because the last time I set it up, it remembered what I did. So all I have to do this time is just click OK. And when I do, there you go. I have my cut list. Notice this time, this doesn't say that it is, uh, you know, on on categorized. It is categorized and, and it's all rough lumber. Everything here is rough lumber. My sub-assemblies, I have a back, base, feet, hood, and waist. They're in alphabetical order and within those I have my components in alphabetical order. And again I have the number of copies, the material name, along with the thickness, width, and length. And I have a blank column, and now the decimal thickness, width, and length. So there you go. We have ourselves an open office spreadsheet. Offline, I'm going to create the Excel spreadsheet. It requires a little bit of work. It's not as kind to me as open office, and that open office automatically uh, makes the column widths appropriately depending on what the data is and things like that. So offline um, I have to dress Excel up just a bit and I'll show it to you in a moment. Okay, here's my Excel spreadsheet. You can see up here it says Microsoft Excel and it's the same file. The file that is generated for Excel and OpenOffice is the very same file. Cutlass Plus FX is a is a different file structure slightly, not much, but slightly. Okay, so there we have the Excel spreadsheet, and I'm going to show you the Cutlass Plus FX. To that, for that, I have to um, export to the Cutlass Plus FX using the Cutlass Plus FX export. We'll be back in a moment. Okay, I'm back. When you import to Cutlass Plus FX, you notice that's what this is right here, Cutlass Plus FX, you get a, well, hopefully not an error message, but hopefully a success message. 
Notice it said it imported 49 built parts, zero labor items, and zero other items. Had this um, model had things like hinges or draw pulls or something like that, they would have been listed under other items. But since this model doesn't have those, there were zero of those. I also didn't include any labor here because in this version of my cut list bridge, you can't do that. But notice it says it skipped zero items. If there are any items that have been skipped or any that look blank, um, then you have a problem and you have to figure out what that is. But this was a success, no problem. And here's my cut list. Very much the same. Sub-assemblies here. My waist, feet, hood. Notice they aren't in alphabetical order necessarily. But in this program, you can make them in alphabetical order simply by clicking the tab. So now I, now I have it in alphabetical order. Uh, you may have to do that here too and then go back to sub-assembly to get the descriptions in alphabetical order. So now we have both the sub-assembly and the descriptions in alphabetical order. But nonetheless, we have the same cut list. Um, we didn't provide any of this information, so it simply says not applicable. There you have it. That's three cut lists from basically the same set of attributes. I think you'll find this Cutlass Bridge tool very useful, very quick, and very easy. In part two of this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use some of the more advanced features. In particular, I'm going to show you how to create a cut list for this base cabinet. The base cabinet has hardware, it's got a countertop, it's made out of a combination of dimensioned lumber, sheet goods, and hardwood. And so we'll use the extended entity info dialog box to assign attributes that are particularly useful to cabinet design and cabinet cut list. So until then, I'll see you. I hope you join me in part two. Thank you.